you build your life on your faith. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, I've got a message to share with you today. Could very well be the most important message you ever hear. I feel that way about every one that I preach, but... I especially feel that way about today's. Matthew chapter 16, once you find it there, I want to begin our message after a short prayer on the subject of passage to purpose. Passage to purpose. As soon as you find Matthew chapter 16, Now that you've found it, I need to tell you that I'm going to read it from the Message Bible, and chances are there's only a few people that have that in front of them, so you'll want to to follow it on the screen when I read it in a moment, because I'm just going to read it from there. Uh, The wording is so good, and I decided to use it that way this morning. Um, So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that we we can expect you to speak to us. It seems strange for me to almost say that because I know myself, but I also know what you can do, that you can take nothing and make it something. So would you take this humble clump, lump of clay and use my voice to somehow be your voice today? I ask that with all humility but in the name of Jesus and I ask that you take the words of scripture and let them speak to every heart every heart every person everyone under the sound of my voice now today or later when they watch these messages God thank you for the anointing in Jesus name Amen. Matthew 16, verse 13 through 19 is uh, in the Message Bible. Let's read the story. When Jesus arrived in the village of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, What are people saying about who the Son of Man is? They replied, Some think he is John the baptizer. Some say Elijah some Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He pressed them. And how about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, You're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus came back. God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven... God himself let you in on this secret of who I really am. Now I'm going to tell you who you are. Who? Who you really are. You are, Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I will put together my church. A church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. (laughs) Wow, what a teaching. This story of Jesus and his disciples may be one of the most concise and thorough explanations of God's plan for the earth and us on the earth. I want to go through it for you today from passage to purpose. Listen very carefully because this is about you. From passage to purpose. What do you mean from passage to purpose? Passage into something. It's like this is your key. This is your your open door. This is how you are transformed. This is the invitation to something. A passage to something. 
And it's so secret that only God can reveal it to us. This is from this scripture. But thank God it's not so secret that God doesn't want everybody to find the passage. So the first part, let's go through uh, these things. I'm going to go through them. You know this scripture probably quite well, especially if you go to church here because I preach from it uh, occasionally or pretty often actually. But the first thing is, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? You know, Jesus asked them, uh, what are people saying about me? The question for people today is not, is not uh, finally, or the big question isn't, what are people saying? The real, powerful, poignant question is, who do you say? Because our passage into what God has for us is not what somebody else is saying. It's not what the world is saying. It's not what's on the news. It's not what everyone else is saying. What our passage is is when it becomes personal. Who do you say that he is? And that was the powerful question. And when Peter was able to answer it, I'll tell you who I say you are. And then Jesus said, this doesn't get revealed to you from earth. This comes from God. From my sermons of the last few weeks, we can't even get it right without God's help. We can't even answer it right. That's why when God tugs at your heart, you better answer. Because today is the day of salvation because you don't even have the strength on your own to get it right. Scripture says sin has so messed up our want to and so messed up our truth and what we think, messed up our minds. I mean, sin has messed us up. It takes God for us to even want the right stuff. It takes God for us to respond. That's why you got to get people to church or tell them about Jesus or tell them how good God is so when they hear it, they have an opportunity to go, yeah, the light goes on and I can respond right now to this passage into new life. So Jesus tells Peter very clearly, it's only when God draws you it's when God does something that you get to see who I really am. Aren't you glad Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, talked to us? And he wants to talk to everybody. Because it's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But when somebody says, you are the Christ, you're it, you're the one. Jesus said things like this, I'm the door passage. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I mean, he is the way into, he's the door. You talk about getting into something. When somebody recognizes Jesus, they pass from death to life, from darkness into his marvelous light. I'm telling you, there is a change. We are made new. We are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's amazing. We're past from death to life. He becomes all of that for us. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Romans 10, verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now you do know what this means, doesn't it? Or don't you? It means that when you recognize him for who he is, 
it means you bring nothing to the table and you completely put your trust in Jesus for your life and eternity. When we recognize who he is, it leaves no room for us to pay for anything. When we recognize that he's the door, then we realize we don't have a key. When we realize that he's the life, we realize we don't have a life without him. When we realize that he's the light, then we're darkness without him. We don't bring anything to the table. You recognize him for who he is, and you get all the benefit of who he is and what he has done for us. It's just, it's that simple. It's why church and religion and Christianity is so difficult for so many people is because we've made it difficult for people. Join a religion, join a church, join this, do this, do that. Act like a Christian. You can never act enough to act like a Christian. You can try it for the rest of your life and when you get to the top of the ladder you're going to find out the last couple rungs aren't there. So go ahead and get on the right ladder. Get on the ladder Jesus has made for us and you'll find the rungs all the way to the top and it'll have none of you on it, all of Him. So when we ask and invite people, put all your faith and trust in Jesus, we're not asking you to become a better person. We're not asking you to act like a Christian. We're asking you to completely deny anything else that would give you merit toward God or, or save you and completely rely on the finished work of Christ. That's our passage. That's our passage. That brings us in. Uh, remember the woman at the well in the Gospel of John? Jesus comes to a well. He's thirsty. He sits down there by divine appointment. There's a woman who comes there and talks about uh, the water. And he, he you know, asks him, do you want me to draw some water for you? And then he tells her, uh, let me tell you, this is what he says to her. Remember? He says, if you knew who I was, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me and I'd give you water that would cause you to never thirst again. The passage into the water that you'll never thirst again is a recognition of who he is. If you knew who I was, you'd get something that would become a living well of water inside of you. Eternal life springing up for you. Whew. Glory, hallelujah. You've got to love somebody like that. He's not trying to change you until you're changed. Well, here's, here's where we want to get to, okay? Uh, the next one is this. Once you recognize who Jesus is, you are the Christ. There's nothing I can do for my salvation. I completely trust and rely on him. I call on his name and I enter in. This is my passage into life and eternity. Then Jesus turns. This is where it gets real interesting. Then Jesus turns and blurts out, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I believe that when we, when we recognize him, it's like the compassion, the love, what God has toward mankind is like he can't help himself. That's what the goodness of God actually means, the word goodness. It's like God can't help himself. He wants to help people. He wants to help. He wants to make better. He wants to bring light. He wants to bring order out of chaos. He wants to create. And so uh, when, when Peter recognized him, then he says, and, and I'll tell you something. I'll tell you who you are. When we enter into Christ, then we find our real identity. Just like the passage said, let me tell you who you really are. 
Jesus will turn to you and go, okay, what I've done for you, you've recognized me and what I've done, now let me tell you who you are. You're a child of God. You are the righteousness of God. You're, you're filled with my spirit. You're a beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You are an heir and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. This is who you are. Let me tell you who you are. You're full of gifts. You're full of power. You're full of grace. The love of God has been poured out in your heart. You're full of what God has put in me. What I have, you have. The same place I have with the Father, you've got it. Let me tell you who you really are. You don't have to look anywhere else for your identity. Your true identity is in who I say you are. And who I say you are is who and what I can build the church on. The church means called out ones with a purpose. Passage to purpose. Let's finish up with this part. This is, this is the part I had to do all that to get to this, but this is really what I want you to hear today. Church is not like anything else on the planet. The church is the culmination of, of God's eternal plan, he meant for it to be this way. We didn't come along and go, well, God's doing great things in people. Let's create church. Let's make an organization that, 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 that shepherds something we've seen. You know, people get born again. This happens. Let's make an earthly organization to control what God is doing with people. Church is God's idea. And church isn't necessarily how it's organized. It's not necessarily how we're meeting here this morning. It, the church is the people who have recognized him. And then in return, he has given you your identity. And now you become a called out one with a purpose. There is no such thing as a person who's a Christian without an eternal purpose. The moment you came into the kingdom, into Jesus, you entered in to God's eternal purpose. And it's so eternal, it's how he wanted it before he even created us. We treat these things, see, we, we look at church like, well, it's a, just another organization. You have boards and you have business stuff and it's just another like you'd have a, like you'd have a club down here. You'd have an organization over here. You have another. No, no, the church is different. The church is what God meant to be happening before he even made us. Let me show you. So he says, you're part of the church. You're called out one with a purpose. What is that purpose? And he says, the last verses we read in Matthew 16 said, and let me tell you something else. I'm giving you keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind, and now I'm using King James language, New King James, and uh, whatever you bind on earth, Message Bible we read, it said, the no on earth is the no in heaven. The yes on earth is a yes in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what is this thing that the church is supposed to be? What are you called out for? What's the purpose you're called out for? What is it? You're called out to have access to heaven and earth. I use the word synergy, which means there's supposed to be something happening because two parts came to together that can do something greater than one part by themselves. God meant that we're co laborers with Him, that what He wants to do in heaven on earth, we are in synergy with that. We are in coherence with that. We are working with 
When you are a Christian, when you say yes to Jesus, when you say yes, He's the one, He changes you, gives you your identity, and then calls you out to be a part of this synergy between heaven and earth. Let's just say it like this. Earth should be totally different because we're here. What if the United States is completely different this weekend because on Wednesday night there were about a dozen people here praying for this country? What what if stuff is happening because somewhere there's a prayer group or a person praying between heaven and earth. They hear something from heaven and they're praying it here on earth and things are different because we're called out ones with a purpose. We're not called out to go through this life comfortably just for ourselves. We're called out with an eternal purpose. Everything we do has eternity stamped on it. Everything we do has God's plan, has God's heart, has God's will in it. Our heart, our our life is part of an eternal plan of God. This This whole idea that we just survive through life and then retire once we get to a certain age and we just kind of make it through life. We're here for a lot more than that. We're here to have an energy, a synergy between us and heaven because I'm walking on this earth, something's different. There's something God wants to do on this planet and because I'm asking Him for it, because I read it in His Word and I see it there and I'm asking Him, He responds with a yes to my yes here. I respond to His yes with a yes here and there's a synergy between heaven and earth and something is different. People are changed. People are coming into the kingdom because I'm on this planet. Planet. We, 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 we do what we do for an eternal perspective. And let me tell you, this is God's design for every person. This is God's design for every person. He has chosen everyone in Christ before the foundations of the world. Look at these scriptures. John 17, verse 24. John 17, verse 24 says, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me. Before the foundation of the world. Now, if you think that's awesome, read Ephesians 1 verse 4. Look at Ephesians 1 verse 4. Oh, are you ready? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Just as he chose us. In him before the foundation of the world. I don't have time to tell you why this is all the way it is and why he chose you and we have to choose him because if he made it where we didn't choose him, it wouldn't even be love. Love is not a one-way thing. He made us in his own image so we could choose him and that's why people can either choose him or reject him because if you don't choose him, It's not love. If he had made robots to worship him, that's not worship. Worship is that we choose him. I choose to worship you today. I choose to call you the God of heaven and earth. I choose you to call you the creator. I choose you as my savior. I choose the love of God and I choose to love you back. I choose to go to church to honor you. I choose to bring my tithes to honor you with the first fruits of all my increase. I I choose to serve in the kingdom of God. I choose to use my gifts to bless people and to shine your light and your love I I choose to do these things that's where it becomes love that's why if you think you have to don't worry about it 
Uh, if, you, if you think you have to do something for God, you've got to go, to go knock on people's doors and do something uh, to try to earn God's favor. Forget about it. You're doing it from the wrong spirit. First, find out how much God loves you and then want to share that love and choose to do what God wants us to do and share what he wants. Now we've got a circle of love going on. He chooses me and I choose him. Glory, hallelujah. This is what he wants for every person. He wants every person on the planet to go, yep, that's the Christ. And then he wants to point to every person on the planet and go, let me tell you who you are. And then he wants everybody to be part of this called out people with a purpose against whom the gates of hell cannot prevail. And he wants us, the called out ones, to be a church of prayer, the word, the spirit, so that there's this synergy between heaven and earth. Uh, Sarasota, Bradenton, Manatee, Sarasota, the world is different because shining light is on this place. Uh, The world is different because Beth Messiah, Messianic Jewish congregation, is on this planet. The world is different because of every other Bible-believing church in the area. The world is different because of it, because we are the called-out ones with a purpose. So people, people treat church like it was something like, well, let's choose a church that, you know, like we would choose a hamburger or something. Friend, this is not a natural thing. Church is like, I mean, people are like, well, I, I, you know, uh, I watch some of these beautiful people sweep the carpet here after our service is over today. And every, time, every Sunday when I see people do things like that and, I, and my mind wants to go, man, they're working so hard and doing so many things. And you kind of want to feel sorry for people. And then you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something just like that is a part of Something hell can't prevail against. Something like that is a circle of love. Something that may look so simple is so much bigger. I'm not cleaning a restaurant. I'm not cleaning an office building. I'm cleaning something where people hear the word of God that impacts them for eternity. I'm part of the called out ones with a purpose and we got keys of access that cause heaven to do stuff on earth. You may not get anything out of this service today except in a few minutes you might help us go, God, do something on the earth you want to do and our prayer together changes stuff because we've been here today. And then the service is open. Somebody's running a vacuum cleaner around here. And they're part of that change on this planet. Somebody does something else, picks up the bulletins. Somebody ushers. Somebody greets. Somebody does this. Somebody does that. And they're part of an eternal purpose that God had in mind before he even created us. We're part of something amazing come on sometimes we it feels so natural but it's so eternal called out ones have you have you said you are the christ of course you have come on with every head bowed and every eye closed my invitation today is simple it's this message who do you say he is That changes everything. Changes everything. Who do you say he is? If you'll say he's the Christ, son of the living God, that means he's everything. He's your savior. He's your door. He's your life. Would you slip your hand up and say, yeah, that's me. You're just testifying to God. Yeah, that's me. I, 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 I personally say, He's the Christ in Jesus' name. We give you praise. And then would you, would you allow him to identify you? Maybe you've struggled with an identity. 
an identity with your failures, an identity with sin, an identity with, with who people say you are, an identity with your family, whatever it might be that, that might be a struggle for you, will you let Jesus be your identity today? Let him tell you who you are. I wish I had all afternoon just to talk to you, tell you you're a child of God, tell you how loved you are, tell you how special you are, tell you you have gifts that nobody else can, can, can represent quite like you can. Nobody has your fingerprint. Nobody has your iris. Nobody can be who you are in the church, in the world, and to people. Let him identify you. And come on, let your heart recognize that you're part of the church, the called out ones with a purpose, that your life has meaning, that you have purpose. You're not here without meaning. You're here to be a part of God's eternal purpose, God's eternal plan. Maybe you haven't thought that way, but today is a new day. Today you're a new wine. Today is the day for something new. You're part of God's purpose. Heaven and earth, in Jesus' name, we give you praise.